So these are the problems that will be on the final exam for uh, solidification and statistical interpretation of entropy, <coughs> uh, chapter four of your textbook. I remember that there will be one solidification problem and one uh, problem relating to entropy because there is a limited amount of time between now and when you have the final. I've decided to cut the problems down to a, a limited subset of these problems. Uh, and this will be something that hopefully will help uh, you study. Uh, so with that here, here are the problems. Okay, first problem. First problem says, use the equation below to estimate the number of crystal-like clusters in a one cubic uh, millimeter of copper at the melting temperature for a 10 and a 60 atom cluster. So that's kind of the first part. And then the second is approximate the cluster to be, uh, well, to do this, we approximate them to be spherical, which, you know, is not exactly right because 10 atoms is small, but uh, it, it's a reasonable, reasonable uh, first approximation. Uh, what volume of liquid is likely to contain one cluster of 100 atoms, which is just an extension of, of these. It's the same problem, essentially. Uh, you're given the atomic volume of liquid copper and the solid liquid interface energy and the Boltzmann constant and the melting temperature. And then here are the two equations. So basically, <clears throat> we're interested in uh, the number of uh, clusters of that size, N0. So N0, that is, that's going to be uh, atoms per cubic millimeter, right? But to do that, we have to use one atom per 1.6 times 10 to the minus 29 cubic meter, right? Because you have the volume of liquid copper. Uh, so that gives you the volume of liquid copper in atom per cubic meter times one cubic meter per one times 10 to the three cubed, millimeter cubed. So that gives us N zero. Um, also in this, <coughs> we have the Boltzmann constant and we have the temperature because this is at the melting temperature. T equals Tm equals one, three, five, six, K. Okay. We need to know uh, delta G of, as a function of R, which we have this equation for. And in that equation, we have uh, negative four thirds pi R cubed delta G V plus four pi R squared gamma SL. Well, we're at T melting, which means this term Delta GV is zero, right? Because the thermodynamic driving force is zero. We have to undercool it in order to get a Delta GV that's not zero. <laughs> Which means now that we can write NR is equal to uh, N zero. X negative four pi r squared gamma SL K over K B T M. <coughs> so for this, 
Uh, we know gamma SL is 0 0.177 joule per meter cubed, or sorry, per meter square. Um, we have the Boltzmann constant, and basically we have everything we need uh, for that. So the next question is, uh, what is R? And R, if we assume spherical, assume a spherical cluster, then we have 4 thirds pi R cubed is equal to N number of atoms in the cluster times omega. So this is number of atoms. This is going to be volume per atom. And paper. So basically we can write now NR sorry NR N R is equal to N zero, which is uh, one over one point six times ten to the Let's write this out. Bigger. R is equal to 1 over 1 1.6 times 10 to the negative 29 times 1 times 10 to the 3 raised to the 3. 9 is n0, x negative 4 pi, and then r squ squared here, this is going to be n atom omega over 4 thirds pi cubed is R, so then R is going to be N atom, and volume per atom is 1.6 times 10 to the minus 29 meters cubed. times thousand cubed Thirds over <coughs> Boltzmann which is one point three eight times ten to the negative twenty three joule per K 
times the melting temperature, which is 1, 3, 5, 6 K. Okay, so here we have an expression for the uh, NR as a function of number of atoms. So using an atom equals 10, we get N equals 9 times 10 to the 13 cluster per cubic meter and substituting in N atom equals 60 get N is equal to 3 cluster per cubic millimeter and N atom equals 100 gives us N is equal to 4 times 10 to the minus 8 cluster per cubic millimeter. And the way the problem was worded is asking for the, uh, uh, the volume of liquid likely to contain one cluster. So this last part for, for n, uh, n atom equals 100, we can rewrite that as uh, 25 cubic meters per cluster I took this and I inverted it and uh, converted it from millimeter to uh, meter because it's 10 to the minus 8, which is a pretty small number. And that's uh, solving uh, the problem. And the next problem I'd like to solve is, is this, which says calculate the homogeneous nucleation rate of liquid copper for undercooling of these three temperatures, 180, 200, and 220 K. Uh, given the latent heat of transformation, the melting temperature, the solid liquid interface energy, the uh, attempt rate for bonding, which is you know, basically the vibrational frequency in, in the liquid, uh, the atomic density of uh, liquid copper, and the Boltzmann constant. So this problem uh, basically comes down to using our expression N, and this is homogeneous, N homogeneous is equal to F0 C0, negative 16 pi gamma cubed Tm squared over 3 uh, times the uh, latent heat of transformation, KBT 1 over delta T squared, right? 
we saw for that, uh, I guess it was two weeks ago. And in this case, we know gamma is equal to 0 0.177 joule per meter squared. Tm is equal to 1356 KLV is equal to 1.88 times 10 to the 9 joule per meter cubed. Uh, KB is equal to 1.38 times 10 to the negative 23 joule per Kelvin. Uh, delta T is equal to 180, 200, and 220 K. So this is what we're varying. F0 is equal to 1 times 10 to the 10 inverse seconds. And last but not least, we need the, uh, the temperature. T is equal to Tm minus delta T, right? Because it's the, uh, the temperature where this is all occurring and it is uh, undercooled below melting by some given amount here, here, and here. And basically now we're just substituting. And doing that, delta T and K and homogeneous and units of one per second meter cubed. So that's uh, nucleation events per second per volume. One eighty, two hundred, two twenty, zero point seven eight times 10 to the 6 and 1 times 10 to the 12. So, <coughs> it does small changes, well, not of course small, but re relatively small changes in undercooling lead to uh, fairly significant changes in the uh, nucleation rate, uh, especially if you're right at kind of that, that critical that critical point you increase uh, you know by whatever 11 orders of magnitude okay last but not least we're going to move to the statistical interpretation of entropy and uh, we're going to solve problem 4.1 from your textbook which basically says you have a rigid container and that rigid container <coughs> is broken or partitioned into equal volumes and we put different amounts of gas in the two chambers and remove the partition. When we remove the partition, the question is how does the entropy change? <clears throat> so, thinking about this, we have ds is equal to basically dqt because it's a rigid container and insulated we have this being pdv over t and pv equals n rt therefore 
is equal to RT over VN, which we can put into here, and then integrate. And doing that, we get um, delta S is equal to the integral V1 to V2 nR over V dV. These two are going to be constant. It's equal to nR log of V2 over V1. Okay. So the first problem says if we have this in the partition that's removed, we have one mole of A gas, one mole of B gas. And basically what happens when we remove this partition is the A gas expands into B, and the B gas expands into A, and uh, in this case we're looking at, at idealized gases, so they're non-interacting, and we're just looking at the change due to the expansion. So, R log of A gas expanding into B, so it has twice the volume, 2V over 1V, and then the B gas expanding, R log 2V over 1V, 2R log 2. Delta S. <coughs> uh, the next problem, part B, says what if and we have this and we have two mole of A, one mole of B, remove the partition. That means delta S is equal to 2, because N is equal to 2, R log 2V over 1V plus 1, 1 mole of V, R log 2V over 1V, Delta S is equal to 3 R log 2. <clears throat> Question C is equal to petition, one mole of A, mole of A. Pressure on the two sides are equal, temperature is equal, the composition is equal, and basically nothing happens. When we remove the partition, which means delta S is equal to zero. And The last part of this problem is what happens if <coughs> we have two mole of A and one mole of A. Well, uh, they do move, but the motion is being driven by uh, the pressure difference. Pressure left is not equal to pressure.
pressure right, right? Because the, the volumes are the same, but the uh, amount is different. And this is, is really not about a, a composition and we don't have a expanding into vacuum or anything. So what we can do is we can take and rewrite this problem as, and say, how far does this partition have to move in order to equilibrate? And it has to move so that this is two to one. Two mole of A, two one mole of A. And now pressure left is equal to the pressure on the right. So we can say, okay, what is the change in entropy for that change in volume? And basically, delta S is equal to 2R, 2 mole, and it expands to 2 thirds V from 1 half V. So we're saying before it was 1 half the length, and now it's 2 thirds the length plus one mole, which is now one third, V, and it used to be one half V. So, delta S is equal to two R log of, what is that, one half, four thirds plus one R log, two thirds. And that's how to solve uh, problem 4.1 in uh, the Gascal textbook. Thank you.